Okay, so in this question, the cannon is elevated by an unknown number of degrees. Well, that's really the question is. In order for the cannon to hit the ship, what angle does it need to be tilted at? Um, and I guess I need to know the initial velocity. The cannon has a muzzle velocity of 100 meters per second. And the lip of the cannon is 40 meters above the water, and the ship is 600 meters away. Projectile motion problem, no problem. We just simply break everything into x and y. In the x direction, like always, we've got dx, dx, and time. What is the x component of the velocity? Well, that is 100 times the cosine of theta. What is the horizontal range? That is 600 meters, and I'll call the time t. I should, of course, define my directions. x is to the right. Y is positive. In the Y direction, I've got V1 is 100 sine theta. V2, I have no idea. The acceleration, I'm going to call negative 9.8. The vertical displacement is 40 down. It travels 40 meters below where it started, so its displacement is negative 40. And the time will simply call T. So pretty standard start, pretty standard finish, really. I'm going to use VDT, Uniform Motion Formula, for the x direction. I'm going to use the big five for the y direction. And I'm going to discover that each of them have two unknowns, t and theta. So I'll just sum them together, and I'll solve for theta. That's probably the trickiest part. Maybe there's a little bit of trick here. So if you got stuck, well, then maybe there's one or two things that I can tell you to get you unstuck. First of all, let's come up with those two equations. In the x equation, we're going to see that 100 cos theta must equal d over t, equals 600 over t. That's v equals d over t. No problem. That's one equation with one unknown. This guy, we're obviously going to use equation number 3 for the billionth time. A half a t squared. Shoving it in, we see that negative 40 equals 100 sine theta minus 4.9 t squared. That is my second equation. Two equations, two unknowns. Put them together and solve. Really, once you've gotten here, you're 90% of the way there, and you're really done the physics. All you have left now is a little bit of math. Okay? Math isn't exactly trivial, but it's only 10 or 20% of the question marks-wise, if I was marking this test. Okay, so what do we do? Well, just like always, we're going to substitute one in for the other. So I think this time I'm going to rearrange this equation for time. And I'm going to see that this goes away, it becomes 6. So it's 6 over the cosine of theta. And I'm going to shove that into equation number 2 here, I guess I should call it. Okay, so in 1 into 2, I will get negative 40 equals 100 sine theta times 6 over cos theta minus 4.9 6 squared over cos squared theta. So that's okay. So what have we got here? One or two little things that we need to know. We've got negative 40 equals 600. What's sine over cos? Sine theta over cos theta, that's the tangent of theta. So I'm going to write tan theta. And that helps me a little bit. What is 6 times squared times 4.9? Looks like that's negative 176.4 over the cos squared of theta. Yes, it does. Okay, so now you might be at a little bit of a loss, but there's a couple of things we can do. Cos squared, 1 over cos squared, is simply secant squared theta. And secant squared theta, if I'm not mistaken, is 1 plus tan squared theta. So we can say minus 176.4 times 1 plus tan squared theta. So a little bit of trig identity action, a little bit of math problem. But once we've solved that now, I think we can simplify and solve this thing pretty straightforward. We can see that, let's multiply that guy out, we get negative 176.4 tan squared theta plus 
610 theta minus 176.4 plus 40 equals 0. So I'll move the 40 over there, and that will give me negative 176.4 tan squared theta plus 610 theta minus 100 and what? 36.4 equals 0. Okay, so what? Well, so what? This is just a quadratic formula, except instead of x, we have tan theta. So using the quadratic formula, we can get tan theta. My calculator, which was like $15, if I hit mode a few times, it says equation, and then I can go to degree 2. And it asks me what a is. Well, a, of course, is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. a is negative 176.4. B is 600, and C is negative 136.4. This thing tells me, therefore, that tan is equal to either 0.24498 or 3.15638, more decimals, obviously. Which, of course, means that I can go back to normal mode of my calculator, and I can say the tan inverse so theta must be either equal to tan inverse of that, 0.24498, which is 13.8 degrees, or it must be the tan inverse of 3.15638, which is 72.4 degrees. Now, it's not surprising that there are two answers because we had a quadratic equation, but physically does it make sense that there are two different angles with which they can hit the ship? And I hope it does. The lower angle, 13 degrees, the projectile is going to go At the higher angle, 72 degrees, it's going to go much higher and come down. Now, which one do you prefer, obviously? Well, hmm, if you're the gunner, the higher one would mean that the final velocity of the ball was a lot higher, and it would go down right through the ship and help it to sink quickly. So you might want the higher one, but the higher one's going to have a lot more air resistance over the course of the whole trip, so maybe you take the lower one, because remember, we're ignoring air resistance, and in real life, air resistance is certainly a factor, so that's a really tough question. But sorry, these two are, in fact, the actual answers to the problem.